everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a video that I'm really excited about. It's going to be Moira Rose from Schitt's Creek, her top 10 outfits from the whole series. This is very, very hard to narrow down because there's so many good outfits. Everything she wears on the show is amazing and couture and just super fashionable and always giving a statement. For people who don't know, the show is basically about people who are very, very rich, lost all their money living in a town, Schitt's Creek, that they actually own. She actually kept all of her clothes, <laughs> so they live in a motel and she's wearing all this really, really fashionable high-end um, clothing and pieces. She's got a million wigs, which she changes in and out throughout, um, throughout different episodes based on her mood and what she's going through. So part of that is incorporated into these top 10. I'm gonna be inserting photos of them so you guys have reference and I'll be giving which season and which episode they're in and some context around the outfits and what's going on. Um, I really want to hear what you guys think. If you agree that these are her best outfits, if you think I missed one, so comment down below. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. But before we do, I just want to ask you to subscribe to my channel and also click the notification bell. I'm also on Instagram, Bloom and Love NYC. I'll link that in the um, description below so you can follow me on there as well. All right, coming in at number 10 is an outfit from season three, episode one, the opening night. This is when Moira has joined city council and she has her first meeting with the public. So she's come on with a very kind of Russian winter looking um, kind of babushka hat and she's got black feathers and le black leather gloves. I just think this outfit is really, really chic. I think it's obviously wildly inappropriate for a small town city council meeting. So many outfits are black, but with different textures and beadings and feathers and all kinds of things going on, they're never dull. She's never in just a plain black outfit. This is so interesting to look at and obviously just very funny because it's just so not fitting for a city council meeting. Number nine comes from season five, episode nine, the MVP. This is right around when they're starting to do cabaret, these small productions. So she's helping Jocelyn with auditions and she eventually ends up helping her with um, running rehearsals and just actually doing the production of the show. This is one of my favorite looks, obviously, but it, the minute I saw it, I thought it was so genius. She is wearing her normal hair pulled back, sort of in a messy bun, like low bun, and she has one of her wigs on top of her regular hair, but instead of obviously fully covering it, she's got it at about the crown of her head. So it's obviously a different color, it's curly, so she's got her blonde uh, straight hair on the bottom and she has her brown curly wig, which is just so funny and so great. And I've never seen this done before and she's the only person that can do this and have it actually look somewhat chic. The outfit itself is not necessarily a huge standout. She's wearing a huge statement necklace with tons of different layers and it's silver and really interesting looking, very antique looking which is great. I'm not sure if she's worn it before in the series and she's wearing just a black kind of layered um, big sleeve dress. So it's not anything, if it was just this outfit, I don't think it would have made the top 10, but the fact that she's wearing the wig on top of her normal hair with her hair showing is just such a crazy look. I don't know if she's trying to be artsy here because she's working on this play or musical. Coming in at number eight is actually not from a specific episode. I have coined it just as her pajama look. She, as anybody who watches the show, you know what I'm talking about. She usually wears silk or satin, very formal looking pajamas, striped or just a plain color. In this photo that I pulled, she's wearing black pajamas and she's wearing a vest on top of it with a really pretty brooch. I think she reveals this in the first or second episode of the entire series that she wears this and she wears a formal vest usually on top of the pajamas. The minute I saw her do this, I just thought it was so absurd. Obviously it looks very nice and extremely 
elevated and very, for maybe for like a photo shoot, this would make sense. But the fact that she's actually seen in bed countless times throughout the series with not just these pajamas that are also on their own, really nice looking. I actually wear pajamas like this sometimes, usually in the winter. Um, certainly not with the vest and the brooch and other accessories on top of it. It's not comfortable. She's got a brooch with a pin, obviously, on her chest, so I'm not really sure how she sleeps with this. Anyway, so I think this just had to make the top 10 because it's seen so many different times with different sets of pajamas and different vests with different other accessories, and it's obviously a huge statement and something I've never personally seen before. Number seven is from season two, episode one, Finding David. This is when David went missing um, and he ended up in an Amish community. If you remember this episode, Moira was actually more concerned about this really vintage old bag that he took um, with him when he left uh, instead of her own son, which is a really funny plot line in this episode. But what she's wearing here is amazing. It's this really cool looking black dress. I don't even really know how to explain it, but it's long sleeved and she's got some kind of like a fishnet uh, cut out tights. She's got really, really high heels, a peep toe heel. And that hat is amazing. It's feathered, it's huge. It's just an outfit that you would obviously not wear on a day to day basis. She has a lot of looks that look costumey, but this with the hat and everything looks very sort of like a very elevated Halloween costume or Halloween themed kind of mystery looking party or something. But this this is a really great outfit and between, I think what really makes it, the dress is cool, but what makes it is the hat and the stockings. So that is our number seven look. All right, coming in at number six is from season four, episode 12, Singles Week. This is when um, Alexis and Moyer are putting on the singles week at the cafe and at the in the town. She is supposed to be there helping uh, helping Alexis at the cafe do the very the kickoff event of this week. Instead, she's with Jocelyn at the hospital where Jocelyn's about to give birth to her baby. This outfit is actually one of the ones that's the least kind of out there and crazy. I just think it's really fashionable. I love the boots. I couldn't get the best photo of this um, this outfit. There were ones that just showed the dress, which obviously it's a beautiful black and white dress and a really interesting pattern. But I wanted to make sure that I included the boots because the boots match the dress, but not in this matchy matchy way. She's got black tights underneath it, which I think definitely makes the whole outfit cohesive and brings it all together. Those boots are just amazing. They're frayed at the top and they're frayed at the bottom with a black heel. It just, I just think it's really, really, I, I think it's a really nice look. I would personally wear this. Um, I think you could wear the dress and wear it without those boots and it might be a little more approachable or a little bit more doable for the average person but I just think it's a nice, um, nice looking, kind of like a, a fashion week looking outfit. This is something that you would wear if you want people to know that you're fashionable and you're fashion forward, but you're still playing it, I don't wanna say safe, but you're not doing anything so crazy that everyone's gonna give you a, a look. All right, halfway through this countdown, we are at number five. This is from season three, episode 10, Sebastian Rain. I'm sure you guys remember this episode. This was when uh, David's ex guy that he dated came into town. He had reached out to Moira, I guess, to do some kind of a photo shoot. He's a photographer. He's this very kind of hipster, bohemian guy that is completely condescending and full of himself and thinks he is just a genius. Um, we never actually see his photos, so I don't know if he has the goods to back it up, but he basically is described as sort of a sexy, homeless looking guy. He comes in to meet with Moira. She thinks that they're just doing a talk about what the photo shoot is actually going to be, and he ends up kind of tricking her into taking photos. This look is so amazing. 
Again, she's got this huge statement necklace that's gorgeous, a white long sleeve shirt, but the dress that she's wearing with it, I don't know what this is. I don't know what material this is. It's sort of like a faux leather or like kind of almost like plastic looking. It basically looks like she's wearing a black garbage bag. Um, it's tied or comes together right below the chest and it's um, a strapless on top of the white long sleeve shirt. This is just one of the looks that Moira has that obviously 99% of people would never be able to pull off or even have the desire to wear. And again, somehow she makes this work. Probably if I saw a person wearing this, I would do many double takes, but she just makes it look elevated and she makes it look normal. That says a lot about the character and her acting ability, but this was a weird one for sure. All right, you guys, I'm really excited about these next few. They are obviously my top, top picks. I think they're all incredible. And whenever we can, if ever we can get back to parties and normalcy, I would want to be all four of these for Halloween at some point. So number four is from season two, episode eight, Milk Money. And it is her outfit that she wears to the cafe when she's meeting people um, after she's announced that she's running for city council. I don't even know where to start with this. It's like some kind of elevated space suit or something. It's a coppery piece with huge billowy like wide leg pants and it's a top with a gigantic bow. I think it's hard to even tell there's just so much material going on she's wearing her kind of signature gloves her hair is normal she's not wearing a wig she's got a pretty standard bag that she's wearing brown sunglasses brown turquoise sunglasses so she's made the rest of the outfit a little she's brought that down a little bit because this outfit is really crazy I think the color is obviously very pretty and I think if this was just a top or this was just the pant then it wouldn't be as strange necessarily but the fact that it's together and it's honestly not that flattering on her um, because it's a wide leg and it's a rather big uh, top with a lot of material on the top but just the fact that she thought that this was this made sense to wear. I think it, Twyla says something about how she has such a daring or interesting outfit and she takes it as a compliment. Um, it's just so funny because it shows that she's just so confident in herself and she loves everything she wears and you can tell she does, which is something that I really like. Even though a lot of her things are totally out there and really shocking, she just owns it and she thinks everything she wears is phenomenal, which she's not totally wrong. Or this outfit in particular is definitely one of the nuttier ones and really says a statement. I'm not really sure what she's trying to say besides look at me. I know that Twyla offered her a sticker so people would know her name and she just said it didn't go with the outfit. Okay, we've made it to the top three. So this one comes from season four, episode five, RIP Moira Rose. This is such a good episode. This is where the internet thinks she's actually passed away and she's receiving all of these flowers and deliveries and the press is outside of the motel so she's very excited about that, that people are making a big deal. She essentially freaks out with Stevie that she didn't want to make an announcement or be seen, um, be seen by the public at this motel so she spends who knows how long trying to find an outfit for her to meet the press and come out and say a statement that she is still alive. When this outfit was revealed, I just died. It is so insane and the hair is, the wig for this one is so, it just looks like, I don't know, curly fries or something. The color is like this yellowish blonde that just, I think looks so tacky, <laughs> but again, she's wearing this big statement necklace and I don't know if it's some kind of a cape or it's just this jacket with a very long train. 
Um, she's wearing really, really, really tall heels, basically something Lady Gaga would have worn several years ago. But the way that they reveal this outfit and the way she handles wearing it is so great. You should definitely check it out if you haven't already. She essentially turns around to reveal this huge train and she's being very dramatic with it. When she finally, after she finally has picked this outfit out and she's ready to go outside and talk to the press, they're all gone because she took so long. Um, and she decides to just go to the cafe um, in this outfit. All right, our number two is from season five, episode four, The Dress. It actually makes two appearances, initially as a dress that she's purchased without really letting her family know. Um, I think this dress is valued in real life at over $5,000. I forget what they say or what she says it is on the show. It's a Pamela Rowland dress and it's ostrich feathers and it's I think like a double cape. It's so beautiful and when she revealed it, she just looked so elegant and so beautiful. Well, and it's honestly something that I wouldn't necessarily think that she would wear. It's not a bright color, which we don't see her in often, but it is something that's a lot more sparkly. It's just, it's just really, really pretty. And I, it's very unlike most of what she wears in the show. She often wears a lot of costume jewelry, obviously wigs, and really dark colors and not that this isn't a statement because it's beautiful but it's just very different and it's just so elegant so I had to include it in here all right you guys are probably not surprised at what the number one pick is it's from the very last episode of the series season 6 episode 14 happy ending it is her look for when she marries Patrick and David. This is so crazy. Between the big Pope, is that the right? I don't even know, cause I'm not Catholic, but whatever that hat is, the gold gloves, the hair down to who knows, to her knees basically, and the hair that is wrapped around the hat. I read after I watched the finale that she actually wanted that and I guess that was something that she specifically asked Dan Levy about. So again, props to her. I also want to in this, I want to make sure that I shout out Deborah Hansen, where she was the costume designer of this show. I know that Catherine O'Hara had a lot to do with what she ended up wearing in the show herself, um, between the wig idea and obviously just the inspiration. I've heard her talk about certain people that she kind of took from to get this whole look and between her accent and just her aesthetic. But obviously we should give credit to Deborah Hansen for pulling all of the costumes together for these characters because each character is has a very unique style and it completely matches their personality in the show. This is just the, the best and it was perfect that it ended on this note. I don't know where she would have gotten this <laughs> if she... I don't know, there's no backstory for where this came from, but the, the hair is crazy. Also, you'll notice sort of at her waistline, the hair is different. So they clearly combined like multiple wigs for this look because it's so long, but the hair wrapping around the hat and the hat up, you know, five feet is just, it's amazing. And a second I saw it, I was like, this is so perfect. And this is a perfect ending for what she's gonna wear in the whole series. So that's it. That's my favorite one. And I'm sure you guys have this in your top as well, or you understand why I picked it. So that's the list. Obviously there's way more outfits. If you feel I missed one, or if you wanna comment down below which one out of the 10 that I picked is your favorite, and don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell because we're gonna have a lot more fun videos like this. So stay tuned, thanks.